In March of 1965, CBS News cameras rode along with school children in Alabama during a legendary moment in the civil rights movement. On Sunday, people gathered on Selma's Edmund Pettus Bridge for the anniversary of a brutal showdown there between the protesters and police. Senior White House correspondent Bill Plant, who covered the civil rights movement, returned to Selma yesterday. The remembrance of Bloody Sunday is a celebration now, but 47 years ago, the violence of that day shocked the nation. You are ordered to disperse. The tiny Alabama town of Selma was the focus of a voting rights campaign, and it met with great local hostility. On a Sunday in March 1965, it exploded into state-sanctioned violence when protesters tried to march from Selma to the state capital of Montgomery. John Lewis was 22, a follower of Dr. Martin Luther King. Lewis was one of the two leaders of the march that fateful Sunday. He was beaten, trampled, and tear-gassed when Alabama state troopers charged the marchers at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death. But this weekend, John Lewis, now a long-serving member of Congress, was back on the bridge. Older now, but still determined. I think it's important for those that was not even born, not even a dream, to know what happened know the price that was paid. The only thing I did, I gave a little blood that day. For the past 12 years, Lewis has been dedicated to making sure America, and particularly the nation's lawmakers, never forget the civil rights struggle. He leads a bipartisan annual pilgrimage for members of Congress to Selma, where the march on Montgomery grew out of a murderous act of violence in nearby Marion. We were there in 1965. We were among the few newsmen who arrived early enough before the troopers began holding off the press. One Negro was shot in the stomach. He is in critical condition. He says that he thinks the troopers shot him. That man was Jimmy Lee Jackson. Eight days later, he died. His death was the spark that set off the idea for the march on Montgomery. The planning was done here at Brown Chapel AME Church, where for the previous couple of months, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had been preaching and praying to register black voters in Alabama. And I want to thank you for responding to the call. At a dinner hosted by the governor in the Alabama state capitol, where Jefferson Davis was sworn in as president of the Confederacy, and where George Wallace vowed segregation forever, the young people who made the pilgrimage with Lewis sang of a new day. Somebody. 47 years in the making, and proof that great change is possible in the span of a lifetime. Bill Plant is with us now. Uh, two things. One, John Lewis was 22 years old. Mm, that's right. And, and it reminds you of those brave, all those brave young uh, men and women at that time, also brave young men and women of the Arab Spring of our time. It must have been hard to cover that kind of story without being drawn into it. Charlie, nothing I have covered in 48 years at CBS News has been as difficult as that to keep myself out of. Because, you know, the Constitution says everybody can vote. And we, if I believe that, you know, that was uh, not interfering, I hope. It was painful and empowering to watch at the same time. It was.